Hi class. Today we're going to do two short lessons and combine them. That's right, it's a two for Tuesday. So first we are going to explore pi and we're going to prove why pi is correct with a very short activity. And then after that we're going to investigate how our eyes work and we're going to do an activity around that with a pinhole viewer. Let's go, two for Tuesday. What is pi? Well, not that kind of pi. Pi is the constant used in equations to find all of the dimensions of circles and spheres. The other trait that pi is known for is that it's an irrational number. This means that the number of digits following the decimal point is infinite and will never repeat. Here's the first few so you can start memorizing. 3.14152653589792384 Well, you get the point, and it just keeps going. Now let's prove pi with a simple activity. So for this, you need something circular. I'm going to use this paper plate. You could use really anything circular or cylindrical. You could use a Pringles can, oatmeal can, a plate, cup, anything really will work. And you're going to need some string to measure it. Just in case you don't have anything circular, I've got you covered. There's a link in the assignment where you can print out a perfect circle. Then you can just cut that out and measure that one. All right, first thing you wanna do is measure the circumference of your circle. That's the distance around is the circumference. I'm going to measure just this part of the circle so that this flap on the plate can give me a little lip to work with and my string will not fall off. And speaking of string, cut off a portion of string that you think is gonna be just a little bit longer than your circle, and we'll use that to measure. Okay, now rest the string on your circle and try to get the best measurement you can to make a perfect circle with your string going around. And find the first end, hold that tight and try to see just about exactly where the other part of the string lines up with that. When you think you've got it, pinch it so you don't lose that place. And then you can cut the rest of the string off, you don't have to, or you could just pull it up to the measuring tape while you're holding it. Okay, I'm still holding the string exactly where it touched the end. Now I'm gonna take this part and put it at the very beginning of my measuring tape. Try to line it up exact as possible. And then measure to the end of my string. Okay, my circumference, that was a distance around. That was 22 inches. Now I'm gonna measure my diameter. For my diameter, I need my circle back and I just need my measuring tape. And I'm going to measure from one point of the circle all the way to the opposite end, that point there. And that looks like it's just about seven inches. So I'm gonna write that down. There you go, circumference 22 inches, diameter 7 inches. Okay, to prove pi, you just have one step left to do, and that is to divide your circumference by your diameter. So you're going to do 22 divided by 7 equals, or whatever you got, you're going to divide those two numbers together. Here we go, 22 divided by 7 equals, would you look at that, 3.14 blah 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 blah. It's not exactly pi, because these numbers after the 1, 4 are a little bit off, but that's just because it's very hard to do an absolutely precise measurement with the method that we're using right now. But you can see that you'll probably get very close to pi. Again, your measurement might be off by just a little bit, but you can trust that the circle will always come to pi. Again, you can do it with whatever circle or cylinder you have available. You could do the same thing with your Pringles can where you measure that amount of the string and then divide it by the circumference, which is the distance from this point of the circle to the other point. And you should probably come up with something close to pi again. Any circle or cylinder you have ought to work, so try it out. Always remember that circumference equals pi times diameter. So we can use this to our advantage. So let's say that you walk around a circle, like a track or a big circle like that. And let's say that the diameter of that circle is 100 feet. Now you want to find how far you walked. So you can use pi to your advantage. <laughs> the circumference of that circle you're going to find by doing pi times the diameter. So pi, remember, is about 
And the diameter we said is 100 feet. 3.14 times 100 feet is 314 feet. So that's the circumference of the area that you walked, 314 feet. Pi comes in handy really often. Gotta love pi, right? Okay, now we're gonna move on to the second part of our two for Tuesday. And this part has nothing to do with pi. This part is about I. If you've ever wondered how your eyes work, it's a really interesting process. So we're gonna explore that right now. And we're going to find how our eyes, our brain, and light work together to produce the images that we see. Your eye works in a similar way to a camera. When you look at an object, light is reflected from that object and it enters your eyes through the pupil and is focused through the optical components within the eye. The front of the eye is made of the cornea, the iris, the pupil, and the lens, and that focuses the image onto the retina. Now the retina is an essential part of the eye that enables vision. It's a thin layer of tissue that covers approximately 65% of the back of the eye near the optic nerve. Its job is to receive light from the lens, then convert it to neural signals that go to your brain and transmit those to your brain for visual recognition. Great job, retina. When light enters the eye, it's focused to a pinpoint on the macula. That's a small area in the center of the retina at the back of the eye. And the macula is responsible for central detailed vision, which allows you to see fine detail and color and to read and recognize faces. So when light stimulates those nerve cells in the retina, messages are sent along the optic nerve to the brain. Then the optic nerves from the two eyes join together inside the brain, and the brain uses that information from each optic nerve to combine that vision from the two eyes, allowing you to see one image. Your eyes actually take in images upside down, but your brain knows better. So your brain receives those images and automatically flips them around so that you can perceive them to be right side up. We are now going to design a pinhole viewer that works in much the same way that your eyes work. Okay, to design your pinhole viewer, you need a cup, like a paper cup, plastic cup, styrofoam cup, doesn't really matter. Then you're going to need something to poke a hole with. This is a thumbtack that I'm going to use. You could use a sewing needle if you have that. You're gonna need a rubber band, wax paper. If you don't have wax paper, you might have tracing paper at home. That would work just as well. And anything else? Oh, optionally, you could use some aluminum foil. To begin, take your cup, turn it upside down. Now take your thumbtack or whatever you're gonna poke a hole with and try to get it as much in the center as possible. You might need an adult to do this for you and just poke a tiny little hole right in the center and pull it out. So you can see the light coming through that tiny hole there. Okay, that's about as big as you want. Now turn it around so the lip of your cup is up. Take out your wax paper. You're gonna need enough to cover the lip of that cup. So like this, right? Pull it tight and use a rubber band to secure it. Now that you have it on like this, you wanna make sure that it's tight, like the top of a drum. If it's wrinkly or loose, it's not gonna work. So try to pull it as tight as you can and keep it that way with a rubber band. This looks good. Now for the optional part, the way that this camera works is that it's all dark except for what comes in through the pinhole. Now sometimes your cup that you use might let more light in than you want. So you can take the tin foil, the aluminum foil, and you could wrap it around there. And what that'll do is that'll help to keep some of the light out of there. But if you do this, make sure that you do not cover up your pinhole. Okay, keep your pinhole uncovered. You can go around it as much as you want but just keep that panel open and also make sure that the wax paper is completely open as well. You basically just want to cover around the outside of your cup, but leave your wax paper and your pinhole exposed. Got it? Now remember, this is optional. You don't have to do the tinfoil. 
So light comes through the pinhole, and then what you should be able to see is the shadow projected onto this like a screen, almost like a movie screen, but it's not gonna be very clear. It's gonna be shadowy, but what you're gonna notice is that it's upside down, and that's exactly what you're looking for with your pinhole viewer. You wanna see the image upside down, because what you're seeing is the way the image is before your brain translates it and flips it up for you. Let's try it out. Some mistakes that you might make that make it not work is number one, you try to look through the pinhole. No, silly, that's not for looking through. You have to turn it around so that the light comes through the pinhole and you look at the wax paper. Another mistake people make is they hold it right up to their face like this. If you hold it right up to your face, you won't be able to see the image produced on the wax paper. You need to hold it a few inches away from your face and look closely there. You should see some shadows coming through. And the biggest mistake that people make is that they're in a room with way too much light. Like right now, I'm outside, there's too much sunlight coming in. I can't really use this. What you wanna do is go into like a closet or a really dark room, turn on a bright lamp and try to, try to see the light come through your pinhole here and the shadow on there that should be upside down. One thing that you can do to help filter out the light. Is to put a blanket or a towel over your head and then hold this outside of the blanket so the pinhole is outside of the blanket and try to wrap it around so that you can't see anything. Oh wow, that works. Yeah, that works like gangbusters. It worked. Well, thanks for joining us on our Two for Tuesdays. I hope you had fun with your pie experiment and your pinhole viewer to see images upside down just like your actual eyeballs do, but your brain knows better and it flips them around so you can see it right side up. Remember that, go forward, have a wonderful day. Goodbye.